let us see what would happen if there is a high velocity blunt trauma. So first we categorized penetrating and blunt. Penetrating we identified two potential areas that is the thyrohyoid and the cricothyroid membrane. Then we understood about blunt trauma where we discussed about a low velocity and a high velocity trauma. If there is a low velocity trauma, what would happen if there is a high velocity trauma? We are now going to discuss. Now if there is a high velocity trauma, what would happen? The first and foremost thing is it can cause fractures of the laryngeal skeleton because the velocity with which the object is injuring the larynx is very high. Now, if it is an uncalcified thyroid cartilage or if it is a calcified thyroid cartilage, how will it make a difference? Now, say it is an uncalcified thyroid cartilage, which you often see in young. Now, if there is an uncalcified thyroid cartilage and if there is a trauma which is of high velocity, the cartilage is still not calcified. It has an ability to recoil, the ability to absorb that shock. It has an ability to withstand the amount of trauma. So, usually do not see any major injury. There is no major injury that you would see if it is an uncalcified thyroid cartilage. Okay, so if it's an uncalcified thyroid cartilage, you would not see any major injury. But if it is a calcified thyroid cartilage, of course, you can see some fractures. The thyroid ala can get fractured, the cricoid can get fractured, there can be bleeding into the paraglottic space, rinky space and the interarytenoid spaces. So with the calcified thyroid cartilage, you can see that there will be fractures. So here you will see fractures. Okay, in an uncalcified thyroid cartilage, usually it will recoil back. Maximum is sometimes that the from the thyroid cartilage, you have the epiglottis attached, right? So sometimes you may see that the epiglottis can get dislocated from the thyroid cartilage. That could be the only possible consequence if there is an uncalcified thyroid cartilage. But if it's a calcified thyroid cartilage, you can see fracture at the level of the ala of the thyroid cartilage. You can see displacement of the cartilage you can see bleeding into the spaces now if it is the trauma to the arytenoids what would happen see there is a possibility of either bleeding into the arytenoid space there can be displacement of the arytenoid and there can also be displacement of cricoid because cricoid and arytenoid are connected at the crico arytenoid junction so we know on the superior facet of the cricoid you have the arytenoid sitting so whenever there is an injury to the arytenoid the cricoid can also get injured and if there is cricoid injury it could also result in stenosis so if it is a high velocity but a blunt trauma if it, it depends on what type of thyroid cartilage it is uncalcified usually nothing much except that the petiole of the epiglottis may get dislocated if it is a calcified thyroid cartilage you can expect to have fracture if there is a fract injury to the arytenoids there can be bleeding there can be disruption or there can be injury to the cricoid as well resulting in cricoid stenosis so these are the features that you would see if there is a high velocity trauma affecting the laryngeal skeleton low velocity we said that there would probably be no injury but here we are saying that there is a possibility of fracture of the laryngeal skeleton now a very high velocity trauma when it comes and hits the larynx there is a possibility that the cricoid so we know the cricoid cartilage sits on the trachea there is a possibility that the cricoid can get separated from the trachea and when cricoid gets separated from the trachea it will result in cricotracheal separation so it will result in what cricotracheal separation and pneumothorax now this is something that can be fatal for the patient and this can be a situation that can be life threatening so this situation where there is a high velocity blunt trauma this will result in probability of the cricoid which is sitting on the trachea so the cricoid can get separated from the first tracheal ring resulting in a cricotracheal separation and that cricotracheal separation can be fatal and life-threatening because of the pneumothorax and because of the air leak and because of the instability of the larynx by itself now that 
is something that you have to recognize at the earliest. In this situation, even to do a tracheostomy, even to do a cricothyrotomy would be very, very difficult, extremely difficult. So managing a patient where there is separation of the cricoid from the trachea is a big challenge and hence identifying cricotracheal separation is something that you should expect if there is a high velocity blunt trauma. So the fractures on one segment, yes, they are definitely going to cause some problems to the larynx. But the one that is definitely of biggest concern is going to be cricotracheal separation.